Keith, obviously a pretty big change at offensive coordinator. You know, the offensive staff, what's it been like these last couple of days trying to, to move forward with Dirk now? Uh, it's been good. You know, I think the one thing, um, you know, obviously you can't take for granted is, you know, the uh, veteran leadership that Dirk has has been doing uh, between offensive coordinating and head coaching and just coaching in general for, you know, 39, 40 years, I think he says. And, you know, I think just having uh, somebody with that kind of veteran leadership just brings a lot of confidence, uh, not only to the, uh, the offensive with the players, but to the staff as well, just giving us an opportunity um, to pick his brain. And then, you know, for, for me and I, I hope, you know, everybody that's involved in our staff, you get a chance to sit back and just take notes on how he does things because it definitely uh, comes off as uh, veteran moves and uh, pretty easy. It looked like he was having fun at practice out there the other day. I mean, what's it been like for you the last you know, year or so getting to know him? Or did you know him beforehand? Um, so, it's, yeah, I, I did not know Dirk beforehand. I think my first real interaction was back when he was a head coach at uh, – Tampa Bay. Um, I went there and did an internship there, and that was the first time I kind of really got to know him uh, as far as from a coaching aspect and more than just word of mouth. Um, but obviously, you know, since I've been here, it's been awesome, you know, in January when I got here and then, you know, just having him in the offensive meetings. And it goes back to what I said, just uh, veteran leadership and just how he approaches things, how his mindset is for the game and just from a coaching perspective as well. Is he going to be upstairs, down? Is he going to call plays or how is that going to work? That's a very good question. That's probably a better question for him or Andy because I'm not 100% sure on that. But, you know, obviously I, I don't think that's going to matter. I think it's going to be one of those things where um, whatever is the best place for him to be for us to operate is where he'll be. Well, what's that like? I mean, obviously the game against UTEP was not very good offensively. And to see one of your friends and fellow coaches, you know, you know the move get made with Tim. I mean, how tough is that? And I know it happens in this business, but I mean, it can't be easy in the middle of the season for something like that to happen. Yeah, I mean, I think, like you said, it's, you know, something that happens in this business. I think, um, you know, obviously, um, you know, Cloud being the type of guy that he is, you uh, wish the best for him and his family. I think at the same time, it's one of those things where we always talk about adversity and how you're going to handle those things. And I think for us uh, here, we got to move on and get ready for the next game. And that's really the big thing. Uh, it's like, you know, it's like one of those things where, you know, you have a bad day at work, you have a bad day at home or something like that with your wife. You try to do your best to think about it and see what you correct. correct. But at the at, uh, and our strength is to being able to move on to the next thing and continue on the focus of the task at hand, which is getting ready for San Diego State. Obviously, you guys only had a week. It's not like you can make drastic changes with the offense, but how do you kind of hone in on the little details with a, a new offensive coordinator? Uh, that's a good question. I think, you know, when it comes to uh, that, I think it's more about your position, right? Uh, it's, you know, the same thing I talked to you guys about earlier in the season. We've got to get, uh, you know, get consistent in the run game when it comes to aiming points and pass protection, getting better there, just being physical, uh, being sturdy there, catching the ball out the backfield, you know, trying to get, you know, the group uh, from the bottom up to continue to build on their fundamentals and techniques. I think that's where the details that you hone in on, because I think if you try to focus too much on the broader picture, you can find yourself out of whack. We all each as coaches have to get our, our group, our room, our room, excuse me, I'm saying group and room at the same time. <laughs> we got to get our, our rooms uh, as best as we can to get them ready for uh, Friday. And this is what I will tell you. You guys know this. You guys have been around this. At least I hope you do. You know, football is a, a long season. College football is a long season. And really what you want your team to do is continue to get better after each week. And that's what we're trying to do as coaches is get this team better as e each week. And you talk Andy talked about that uh, Dirk was going to come in and try and make the offense a little more simple for the quarterbacks. You know, in what ways have you seen that happen? That is a great question. I think, um, you know, obviously I think it just comes to – uh, comes with, you know, just the experience that he has of how how long he's been around quarterback play, how he's coached quarterbacks, um, and not taking anything away from uh, Coach Plow and what he did during his time here. I just think when it comes to uh, if you're talking about a guy with 40 years experience, like, you know, me and you, if you're a 40 year, uh, been working on bikes for 40 years and I've been working on it for two, I would hope you'd be better at fixing bikes to me, you know what I mean? And that's kind of the confidence and the leadership that Dirk not only brings to the quarter, uh, to the offense, but to the quarterback room as well, if that makes sense. So he, he, I mean, he's been through a couple coaching changes and stuff throughout your, your tenure. Um, to have a guy like Dirk, Dirk that can come in, he's already been a part of the program, he knows the program, 
I mean, that's kind of a, probably a luxury to be able to lean on somebody like that in a, in, a, in a circumstance like this, I would say, right? Yeah, and I, you know, I would say, I think lean is probably a different word. It's more, it's probably more like learn, you know what I mean? Uh, and, you know, obviously it's a, it's a, this is a special place uh, to even have a guy like uh, Dirk Cutter, who really was one of the guys that jump-started the history of what this program uh, is about, but to even have the luxury to ha have him around before all this has taken place, it shows you the kind of stability and the strength that Boise State, the Boise State Bronco football program is all about. Um, you know, it's exciting, uh, you know, not only for these players, but you know, I think it, when you're young and you're 18 to 22, you don't appreciate things like having Dirk Cutter coach you. You don't appreciate things like having Dirk Cutter walk up and down the hallway. Um, but for us as coaches and for this program overall, this is a great benefit to have a, a coach like him in the building. I know mean, you probably can't say too much, but the things change all for your running backs. And, and how important, more than anything, is it that George isn't, you know, he gets in the back door quite a bit. And how important is it to maybe get some consistency there? I, I think a lot of things, I hope something changes. I hope they block better, I hope they run better, I hope they catch better. So yes, things will change for them. <laughs> what have you learned about your group through four games this season? Tough kids. Um, I think, you know, just with this group, um, you know, and obviously, you know, so far this season it's really been uh, Ashton and uh, George have taken the bulk of it. But my room overall, uh, you know, one of the things you always worry about uh, you know, throughout a season, okay, is it an effort energy problem or do we need to continue to build on these guys' fundamental and techniques? We do not have an effort energy problem on the team, let alone in, in our in, in the running back room. The thing that I learned about these kids is that they care, that they want to be good, and they're doing their best to uh, do their part whether it's on special teams or in the offense, to help make this team go. And that's where I take my hat off to uh, the Boise State running back slash the program. Oh, we have kids that really care and want to help this program continue to build and take the next step. You also had a big change at quarterback this week, too. I mean, how, offensively, how do you see Talon, uh, you know, coming in and being able to kind of, you know, get the offense going on track again? You know, I think it's, uh, you know, that's a, that's, a, that's a good thing. I actually forgot that we had a quarterback change because Taylor's actually been playing pretty good this, this week. But um, with that being said, uh, I think, you know, obviously, you know, Taylor has to go in there and he has to go in there and operate. And that's what we expect him to do. We don't need, uh, we don't expect Taylor to be Superman. We expect Taylor to, to go in there and do his job. We expect everybody to go out there on the field, you know, that 11 on offense to go out there and do their job. And it's one play at a time and hopefully uh, uh, everybody gets 1% better as we go through the rest of this week, uh, rest of this week going into this game and throughout the season. I mean, you can't really um, predict what somebody's going to do until they get out there. So I'm hoping for the best for this whole team. Spencer was talking yesterday about just trying to keep the guys focused. There's a lot going on with quarterback, coaching changes, whatever. But you got a big game Friday night. For you know, how do you how have you noticed kind of the, the focus of this team and trying to stay focused on the task at hand here? Well, I think, you know, it starts with the leadership of Andy. I think it's not it's not one person. I think it's a group of coaches. I think it's uh, the culture of the program where you, uh, you, this program is about focusing on the next task at hand. It's not about looking at the broader picture. You go one day at a time, one week at a time, and that's what you focus on. And that's the message that we continue to preach to this guy, preach to our guys. And I think, you know, obviously it's a great challenge with San Diego State with the type of football they play uh, coming in here on Friday. And we got to be focused and remain diligent to the task of, of that on Friday. Through the first four games, I mean, Andy was mentioning that the offense just really struggled to get in the rhythm. I mean, why do you think that was? Um, you know, I, I, you can't just pinpoint it on one thing. I think, uh, you know, obviously it comes from, you know, starts with us as coaches continue to put guys in the right in the right places to make plays. But I, I don't even know if, if it's something you can say, oh, this is the problem. I think it's one of those things, you know, we're trying to get better each week, um, you know, over the first four weeks. I hope we have shown glimpses of getting better in certain areas. We just got to put it all together. And that would be my answer to that. Sorry. San Diego State, I mean, like one of the best linebackers in the league, and um, I think 54, and then the defensive line 66. What, what, what have you seen out of those guys? Um, I think the big thing, you know, that we always known about San Diego State from, um, you know, they're going to play tough defense. They're going to be physical. They're going to run and they're going to hit. But I think the thing that we always got to remember, too, you know, Boise State has 
had good defenses, been able to run and hit. Our offense, you know, once we get everything together, we've known been known to, you know, have the playmakers and things like that on both sides of the ball, as well as special teams. I think I'm intrigued for the matchup, and I think it's exciting to watch, you know, two programs that have, um, you know, built their, built their name on toughness and the type of kids that they bring in get a chance to play each other on Friday. I'm excited for our guys, excited for, you know, just this program once again to get a chance to go on the national stage and hopefully put on a product that Boise, that Bronco Nation can be proud of.